Hello everyone and welcome back to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be working on installing the third lead screw onto the power bot. I've printed off a couple of pieces here. I'm basically uh, just kind of testing the flash forge with the fan attachment. There's still a little bit of settings. Uh, it's the kind of the first layer is kind of peeling off the or when it gets extracted from the raft as you can see here kind of well, let's see if we can pick it up. There we go. Yeah, you can definitely see it kind of coming off there. But but overall, uh, I am making strides in uh, getting that dialed in. Should be pretty easy. I just uh, and another thing I think uh, in that video I did mention that when I was reading the PWM, I did see that the voltages weren't changing, and that's because yeah, PWM doesn't really change voltages. It's more of a wavelength type deal. So <laughs> dumb on me. But uh, yep, I'm just going to show you the basic design here. So I have this. Uh, I have this little bearing holder. It holds two 608 ZZ bearings, just the double shielded type. Uh, double metal metal shield and the, the course clamps in here and then this part will clamp on a uh, Something that'll clamp on the frame. I'll show you here real quick that print job just finished for that for the rest of the parts of this here but uh, yep, I'll uh, of course go along But what I want to show you all is the basic tools I use for post-processing prints and I'm sorry about the focus don't know what's going on with the uh, camera phone right now, but um, otherwise so, okay, so let's see what kind of tools we got here. So first off, some safety glasses, always uh, good. And of course, these uh, these are cut-proof gloves. Got these off of Amazon. Let's see, some random Chinese brand. These ones are really good. I like the feel of them. They're not the best like in terms of grip, but they do, uh, oh, Hanvo. Never really recognized the brand. They do stink like hell when you do get them. So you gotta let them off gas for like a week or so before you can really stand to use them. And then of course, I uh, do have some ba other little basics. These are some nice needle nose pliers, good for pulling out supports. And uh, of course I do have my uh, Nipex side cutters. Those are always useful here. There's something I am missing. Oh, here we go. Another thing that's really good for removing supports and other um, just like tiny little things and prints is the uh, scribe tool. I use this. Uh, m mainly for that purpose there, just picking supports out of prints. And of course, uh, I do have a Dremel tool which I use with these engraving bits. Unfortunately, in one of the previous videos, I snapped the uh, flex tube I have, the flex shaft, which is, uh, makes this job a lot easier. And of course, uh, I do have these the set of mini files. And then um, one other important thing is whenever you're printing in certain materials, for instance, like ABS, uh, Inside diameter holes tend to swell inward, so they get smaller, especially for like uh, screw holes like this. I don't like making them bigger. I like making them smaller. Of course, that's just making them too spec in the model, and then printing them, they swell inward, so they're smaller than that. So I have a set of uh, metric drill bits, or of course, whatever st standard screw size you're using, make sure you have an equivalent drill bit. And then I just uh, chuck them up in my hand drill here and just dr bore through those holes to make them uh, to spec, which is a really neat way to get everything uh, go or pretty much accurate in terms of like all your inside holes and whatnot. Oh, and of course, uh, good old faithful here, just a standard X-Acto or hobby knife, though that's always a, a useful touch for post-processing prints here. Oh, and uh, one more thing I forgot. Um, these pallet knives are super useful. I have a like a longer flat one I use to peel prints off the uh, printer bed themselves. This one's useful for like removing larger supports as well as uh, prying prints off or out of their rafts if it's like a larger print. The most important thing I do want to stress is this tool. As you can see from my thumb, got a bit of a scar. Almost lopped it off about twice this year. Um, just for <laughs> just trying to like peel prints off the bed and other stupid mishaps. So yeah, I wear these religiously just because they uh, they definitely save your skin, literally. <laughs> and uh, of course, yeah, they're just super useful. I think it was like, I can't remember, like 30 bucks for three pairs or, it wasn't too bad. But definitely cheaper than an ER bill in America, I'll tell you that much. So yeah, just pick yourself up some. Uh, these ones are nice. I, I don't know if Amazon, I think that's an O that kind of peeled off. Let's see how these, this is one's more intact. Oh, Hanyo. These are nice. Like I said, they stink like high hell whenever, whenever you get them. So just let them off gas in a room you don't go in often. 
for about a week and then you can use them without the, the stench. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get the other prints off the bed and I'll show you all how everything uh, kind of connects with each other because there's, there's about four or five parts to this uh, print here. All right, so I went ahead and uh, pried the rest of the pieces off the printer here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just explain the functionality. This is what will hold the anti-backlash nut to the actual bed frame. And then of course, this is the bottom mount. So what will happen is uh, this particular bottom portion of this uh, bearing holder will go to sit here and then a screw in with these two screws, which are kind of set flush in there. Then of course I have this particular uh, mount for the bearings to clip them in there. Then of course a lead screw will fall in, and this is a uh, has three screw holes. It is basically a uh, lock collar for the bottom of the shaft, so it doesn't uh, lift up or anything, causing any sort of Z inaccuracies on this side. So overall, pretty easy operation. Um, oh crap, I think one thing I forgot to print out was a little spacer up here. I think I might have a couple shims I can use though, not a huge deal. Yep, just uh, yeah, it's a pretty simple little thing and of course it just bolts onto the frame with these. So just got to post process these here and uh, get everything fitted together and ready to install on the printer. So of course first we don our gloves, put on the safety specs so we don't get plastic in the end. My eyes here, there we go. I'm going to pick out the three and the five millimeter drill bits because that's the only two size holes that I have on this per design or set of designs here. So I'll do the fives first. It's pretty simple. Just try to go in as straight as possible so you don't have a crooked hole. As you can see, the even little support pieces just get knocked out. Pretty clean and easy. And if you do it fast enough, you can uh, melt the plastic and just kind of form really smooth walls. So what I like to do with these holes is just a quick little pulse on the highest speed and torque setting. You can do these pretty quickly. I can actually uh, drill quite a few holes in the course of like a minute. Just after doing it so many times for so many different prints. And of course, uh, another thing I did is with these engraving tools is I had to bore out the inner diameter of this hole here. Typically with bigger holes like this, I like to uh, overcompensate. For instance, with a standard M3 nut, I like to uh, make the the horizontal diameter between these two, or between each individual two plane, or two parallel lines on these uh, nuts. I want to make, I make them at least 5.8 millimeter, even though they measure far less in the actual real world, just because that's the typical setting I get for ABS swelling that it gives it a perfect fit and you don't have to worry about uh, clearing out any excess material on those. So just a quick little quick setting for anyone printing with ABS and trying to uh, put an M3 nut in this one of their prints. So one last touch, you can use regular sandpaper for this. Kind of forgot to uh, list that, but I'm just gonna use this guy because it's here, I'm ready to go. Just getting this particular surface since it has, I want it to be as true as and flat as possible since it's meshing with another piece of the print, so. So this, if I can remember correctly, is a bit of a tricky thing to do because I have to use these uh, these guys here. These are like little, uh, basically weld-in th M3 threads that you can use to uh, you know, you just fashion it. So I typically fire up my soldering iron. It is just a locking collar for the MH shaft or the TR8 shaft. And I'm gonna need my needle nose for this particular operation just to get this started. So hold it like this. And then we're just threading the screw and we're going to tighten as much as we can. And then I'm going to grab my Allen keys and tighten it as I uh, so or point the soldering iron towards it. And of course, one thing we want to do is I don't want to uh, thread the screw in all the way throughout the other end of the shaft because I'm going to be using that end to uh, leverage the soldering iron. With our fingers pointed, so now I'm going to heat, use the soldering iron as more of a heat sink for this. Try to get it as flush as possible. So as you can see, it's welded, inserted in there pretty good. I believe I already have this model up on Thingiverse already, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, it's just a, a little DIY 8mm collar I made. So yeah, I'm just going to thread it through. Oh, nice and tight. That's really good, though. Oh, I don't even think I have to use the other screws in this situation here. If I just tighten one down enough, it should be sufficient. Although I'll probably just do two for good measure. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and put another or a few more threads in there just because I can. 
and just hold it like so, so I can push the plastic collar. You do not want to have your hands on the uh, screw because it does sink the heat fairly well. Oh, there we go. Try to get it as straight as possible. Oh, a little deeper than it should, but I think it'll be okay. And then of course I'm going to do, do up a third one here. Get the gist. Okay, so now what I need to do is set in these M3 nuts, at least in the, these two holes, because they'll be blocked by those or that mount when everything's set up. As long as those are in, we're ready to go in terms of getting everything put together. Use our scribe tool just to set everything up right. One other little tip I do have is if you have like a nut like this that you want to keep in a certain hole, get some matching tape to go along on the sides or non-matching if you want to be a renegade. See, instead of falling out like that, you can just keep it in. You don't have to worry about them falling out. Easy as that. Or you can also use a bit of blue tack as well. That's another cool uh, solution to it. I believe I need a, or a couple 20 millimeter fasteners for this part. Just undo that and there we go. Easy as that. All right, so don't think I, yep. Haven't explained how this all goes together now. Now, um, let me go ahead and do that. So this will go, will mount to the bottom of the printer near the uh, end or in the rear. And then of course, this bearing will flush in here. I still need to uh, sand this bit out and press this in once uh, I have this part assembled to the frame. And then of course, oh, let's not do our hot solder iron like that. And of course the shaft will go on like this. At the bottom, this, um, actually, this collar will attach, which will keep it from going up or moving up unexpectedly. And then of course there will be a, a couple of shims up here and then the actual 60 tooth pulley that will be attached to the belt train to the other, to the motor as well as the other two lead screws. So a pretty simple concept design. And of course there will be uh, this piece here. This will attach the bed frame like in this orientation facing up and there will be an anti-backlash nut attached here. And of course these three screw holes were the actual uh, where it'll attach to the bed, so it'll get the uh, lowest amount profile possible. All right, so I got the uh, third lead screw mount taken care of. I need to get the anti-backlash nut on here. Just kind of mocked it up to make sure I could get the uh, actual, the new belt taken care of, or actually mounted on properly, because it's a little bit uh, bigger than what I actually needed for this project. So I have the uh, tensioner in this sort, this sort of weird zigzag configuration, as you can see which works works pretty good. Like I said, I should be updating this these Thingiverse files here shortly. Also, I had to reprint this part or redesign it because the original one was about three millimeters shorter. A little tricky to uh, see on camera. Oh well, yeah, you can, you can see a bit of a height difference there. So now I need to reattach the bed because I had to take it up or t disconnect the electrical connector to get the belt swapped. And of course, I do need to uh, tension or detension it and tension it to make sure to mount up everything. And of course, get this uh, anti backlash nut. Just going with one of these instead of I have previously I had the open build, but this brass one should work fine because I don't have a third one of these, unfortunately. All right, so got the belt train on, got the lead screw on. Give you a good idea of what's of how the tolerances are. So I'm uh, giving quite a bit of force on this side. Let's try the opposite side. As you can hear, the uh, end switch is neither engaging or disengaging. Quite a radical difference the third lead screw has uh, given here. And there's, of course, no binding. It's all very smooth. Gonna have to uh, make sure the motor is up to the task of actually moving this up and down. So once I get it back in the enclosure, I'm going to test that for functionality. But I think it should be okay. I mean, technically, it's lifting up the same amount of weight. Uh, might be another... I know, tiny amount for this lead screw, but these are pretty beefy motors for the most part. So, fingers crossed that we don't run out of torque. So, so the printer is back up in the printer room. I went ahead and leveled everything, the bed and the actual uh, lead screws. So that's all good to go. Right now it is preheating. I'm gonna do a little test print of like a sample swatch for my business. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed, everything seems to be okay. Pretty easy to level the bed in here now that everything's, the bed's not tipping over. Okay, so got the printer fired up here. Now it's all preheated and I'm just printing out this little uh, calibration. Well, it's not only like calibration, it's more of just a color swatch 
for the products I sell on my website. The actual perimeter, or whatever the heck it's called, the skirt around the raft, that looks kind of crummy on this side but I think I just need to nail it down a little bit more. But overall, it does seem decent. It is actually sticking, except for that first part is kind of stringy a bit. Here's the actual uh, part, the other side I was having issues with initially before I tuned it a bit, which I may need to uh, smush it down a bit more. It looks like the corners are trying to peel up, but the bed temperature is pretty low, so I have it about 90 right now for ABS, so that might be another reason why. It's looking a heck of a lot better now, though. Um, I do see some appealing, like, right here. So, yeah, a little bit more tuning would be good. Well, looky there. That is what I call a, uh, victory there. No warp. Really nice first layer, or first sets of layers on there. Decent raft. The extrusion settings need to be tweaked just a little bit, I'd say. But overall, we do have we produced a pretty decent print here. Uh, so yeah, it looks like we're good to go for now So basically what I had to do to get this print quality was I had to properly level the bed just squish it a bit um, Because of course it was lifting off and of course adjust the temperature also I had to adjust the firmware a bit which took me like forever to take care of because Arduino uh, IDE was being a pain with the old Marlin code I have on this which I'm going to update that as well to uh, work in newer Arduino IDEs. Yeah, because I think the firmware that's already on Thingiverse, or on the Thingiverse page for this printer, is uh, pretty outdated. But yeah, but I just need to uh, change the extrusion settings. I think I might have to change the raft uh, separation settings between the first layer of the print and the raft. That might be a little bit stuck on there. I'll have to wait and see. But overall, pretty, uh, pretty good. Definitely a success. So, just want to thank you all for watching this. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing, and check out some other videos and stuff, and have a great day.